Well, hello guys, Simon here from the Midronome. Today we are going to speak about jitter. So let's start with the basics. I have my Midronome here and the MIDI output is connected to an oscilloscope, uh, which you can see on the screen. And that's literally what's coming out of the MIDI plug. And because of the way MIDI works, it's like an inverted pulse, basically. And that's great, that's just one pulse, because then we can easily measure the jitter from one to another. So you can see here, so if I press this, you're gonna hear the metronome. And as I change the tempo, right, the pulses get closer to each other, and as I turn it down, they go away from each other. And if I put it on, say, 125, Right, and I want to measure from one pulse to another, that is exactly 20 milliseconds. And this is confirmed by calculating that 125 divided by 60 seconds times 24 ppqn, that's 50 per second, which is exactly 20 milliseconds in between uh, each of them. So that makes sense. So what is jitter? So jitter is basically the deviation of the distance between two clocks. So how this clock can be exactly 20 milliseconds or a little bit before or a little bit after. And that's called the cycle to cycle jitter. There is a page on the Focusrite website that explains it very well. For example, here you can see this clock is a little bit before and here it's a little bit after. And that's what I've been measuring basically, taking the output of the metronome and see how much each distance between each clock is exactly on point or a little bit before or a little bit after. And I've made those measurements using a digital analyzer and it's basically a bunch of numbers, as you can see here, each of them is the distance between two clocks. And then I've used this software called Octave to make a uh, graph out of this data. So let's look at it. So this is the metronome jitter. So it's on 15,000 ticks. So it's five minutes where the test was running and measuring all the MIDI clock ticks. And for each tick, the distance from the perfect clock, basically, right? So when it's perfect, it's gonna be at zero. If it's at perfect minus a little bit, it's gonna be on the left. If it's at perfect plus a little bit, it's gonna be on the right. And on the metronome, there's actually 10,000 of them that were perfect and uh, 5,000 of them that were 10 nanoseconds after. And of course, there's no such thing as perfect. And in this case, the measuring equipment has a precision of exactly 10 nanoseconds. So that's why anything that's within this range is rounded to zero. Anything that's within this range is rounding to 10. Let's move on. So that was the metronome, And then I've measured on the tetra. So the tetra is a synth, which you can see here. Right, for those who don't know, it's a Dave Smith uh, synth, and this is the clock coming out of the Tetra. So one microsecond, that would be uh, a thousand nanoseconds. And then I've measured just to compare the Papanome, which was the very first metronome uh, that I've made. It took me about a month to make. And back then, I didn't put that much effort into the code. And you can see actually the result is about the same as the Tetra. Like the precision is like minus five plus five, minus eight plus eight maybe. The reason why this is so precise is because the code of the metronome is amazing. Amazingly made and it's using the hardware very well because this has almost the same hardware. Uh, and then I've put all three together. So, so you can see uh, the 3.3 and then the old Papanome as well as the Tetra which are a lot less precise. But in a real situation, all of these will work perfectly fine. Now we've got the MIDI clock coming out of a door. So this is a different story. So Ableton is generating the clock and uh, it's going through my Scarlett. So this is a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4, which generates the uh, MIDI clock. And then I've measured it the same way I did with the metronome. And here you can see the jitter goes from minus 300 to plus 300. That is so much more. And if we make the math, I think you've heard me speaking about this 50,000 times more precise. So that's 300, 
thousand nanoseconds and the metronome was say about plus minus five nanoseconds so if you divide it by five that's sixty thousand times more precise so big big difference this can be enough to give you some issues to this jitter you're going to add the actual delay of the machine you're syncing and then maybe the machine itself has some added jitter and then it gets uh, a lot. So that was with the Scarlett. Then I've just tried with a basic, like a cheap USB to MIDI converter, which takes the signal out of Ableton, and converts it to MIDI DIN, and you can see it's very similar. Here comes the metronome synced to Ableton. So this is the way that you can get your Ableton to spit out a MIDI clock that's precise. The way it works is you got to send an audio signal from your door to uh, the metronome in uh, this port here, the input port, and then in the setup, you gotta choose so input, and then you gotta just put that on sync. And this means that when the audio signal is sent to the metronome, the metronome will, uh, the locked LED will turn on, and then it will be locked to your DAW. And measuring the output that comes out of the metronome, we get this. Not as precise as when he runs his master, but a lot more precise than the Ableton through the Scarlet or the USB converter. Uh, and just to try, so that was with Ableton, then I did the exact same thing with Studio One, which gives similar results. And this is all of them compared. That was it for uh, the Jitter. I hope you've learned something and looking forward to seeing you all on the Kickstarter. Bye for now.